Thank you, that was awesome. Hi, I'm, I'm Jenny from the block, and, and I'm, a, I'm a sync head. Um, I'm super into synchronicity. And synchronicity is when uh, two or more events that have totally nothing in common occur in such a way that you realize that there's a meaning between them. And it was defined originally by the psychologist Carl Jung, and he used an example from his own therapeutic practice of a patient who came in one day and she told a story about a dream in which she was given a golden scarab, which is a big beetle. And as she said this, there was a tapping on the window in Young's office. And he went over and he was like, what's that, that sound? Opens the window and it's a beetle that's trying to get in and it flies in at that moment, he catches it. And it, he and the patient are just totally amazed, blown away by this coincidence. And incidentally, it became a turning point in her therapy. And Jung's theory on that was that there was a connection to something deeper that her life, this, the, the, the random occurrences of it actually connected to a deeper story and that was made clear to her. And that's what I get out of synchronicity. So I actually share synchronicities online with a bunch of people. And what I want to talk about now is one of uh, a synchronicity that's actually been going on for over a year. Sometimes there these coincidences pile up on each other in such a way that it's really just unavoidable that something magical, crazy, absurd, is going on that you have to pay attention to. And so I've actually told parts of this story before, and when I tell it, what's weird about it is it just keeps adding to it. Like there's more coincidences that are brought into the mix, so I'm kind of interested to see what'll happen this time as, as I go into it. Uh, so it was about a year ago that it started the first time. I was on the subway coming out of Brooklyn, and I was having a really bad day, and I was, uh, had been working on a book for a while, and I realized on that day that the book was just not working out, that the draft I was working on was like really just all fucked up and it was totally dense, abstract. I was like trying to write, but I was trying to write like other people's stories and I wasn't writing my own, I realized. And, and that, that kind of was crushing because I, I knew that I had to start over and I had to find my voice and I didn't have it. And I was like, well, maybe I just you know, need to give up, I don't know. And so I'm looking around and you know, as it happens in New York, you know, you're feeling like crap, but then like the subway door opens and somebody totally fabulous comes into the car and you're just like, wow, like you know, your, your mind is uh, brought away from where it's messing you up. And it was this totally fabulous mom and her equally fabulous kid and the kids in this stroller. Mom looks like a model, she's totally done up, like just beautiful. And this kid, I don't know if it was a boy or a girl, which is kind of cool in and of itself because it was like really androgynous, like no pink or blue or like gender based kind of toys that were like super, you know, clues. And they, they were across the way from me and I just like kind of started connecting with this kid. You know, when you see a little cute kid, you want them to like you, like you want them to like make that eye contact with you. And, and, and this kid did and I was like, wow, you know, I started to feel a little better. I've been feeling like shit and I was just like, well, maybe this is a sign from the universe, you know, that something is, is gonna, better is gonna happen. And as soon as I thought that, the kid, he or she, stuck their tongue out at me. So it was like, and I don't mean just like a little, you know, stick your tongue out. It was like, blah, you know, like really waving, almost leeringly, you know, at me. And I was just like, that's messed up. This little angel, innocent being that I was looking at and vibing with just, just did that to me. And I, and I kind of was like, all right. So I looked away instinctively almost, you know, even though I was like weird. And I looked down to the, to the left of me and there's this woman who's reading the Bible. And I just happened to look at a certain line and it just kind of you know, jumps out at me and it's, it's out of the mouths of sucklings and babes, thou hast perfected praise. And I'm not a big Bible person or anything, but it was just weird that that line came up right then as soon as this kid's, this, this babe, you know, stuck its tongue out of its mouth. And so it's like, that's weird. And, and now I'm paying attention and that's kind of what synchronicity starts. You're like, wait a minute, you know, something's going on here. It's, that was weird. And you know, we, we get to another stop, the, the mom, the, the kid get off and then some other people get on. And I'm looking around, I'm just like, oh, what's gonna happen next? And the woman standing right next to me has a tote bag and right in my face, like totally unavoidable, is, is the Rolling Stones logo. You know, the famous one with the tongue and lips. It's like the really iconic one. And so there's a tongue sticking out at me again. And I'm like, what the hell? You know, what, what is, what is like something's trying to transmit a message here. And I don't really know if I even want to know what it is, but it's like, you know, uh, it's definitely in my face. So at that point, I was, I was aware of this and I started in the next couple of weeks seeing that logo everywhere. And I know it's an iconic logo and it shows up in a lot of places, but I mean like everywhere. I was seeing it 
every time I turned around, it was like on a coffee mug or it was on somebody's t-shirt or I would hear Rolling Stones songs in stores randomly and I'm like, you know, not even a huge fan, but I was, you know, starting to become one because I was like, wow, I'm like listening for it now. And it was also kind of a disruptive kind of thing as, as synchronicity sometimes is. It like takes you out of your everyday world. And I remember one time being out to dinner with my partner and his sons and we were celebrating a birthday. And I was kind of distracted. I had had a conversation with my mother earlier that day and was actually, um, she had brought up me having kids. And I um, didn't really feel like, you know, like talking about it, but then I was like telling her, you know, I don't, don't really want to have kids. And we kind of talked about it before, but I was really saying it definitively. And she was totally cool. She's not a pushy person. She's not trying to make me live a certain kind of life. But she said, you know, I just think you're going to regret that. I'm worried that you'll, re you'll regret that. I was like, oh, okay. You know, and, and I had never really had made this decision a while ago. I never really regretted it yet. And, but, you know, I went out to dinner that night. And I was thinking, you know, here I am with my partner and his, his sons. And I was like, well, is, am I going to regret something? Is there some secret thing in me that's going to come out one day and, and regret it? Because that was her thing, like when it's too late, you know, and it will be you know, sooner than later, uh, too late. And so I was thinking about this and kind of lost my own world. And I was zoning out on the wall behind the table, which was this bright red wall. And I was just like not really paying attention to stuff. And then so I went up to, to go to the ladies' room. And when I looked back, I realized that it wasn't a bright red wall. It was actually a humongous poster of the tongue and lips logo. And I had been staring just absently into the, the tongue, basically, and, and, and thinking this stuff. And I was like, that's, that's kind of weird, you know? And, and I've been thinking about my own sexuality, and this feels like a sexual image. And I've been thinking about my own self as, as, as you know, just just a being, you know, and here it was, like, kind of waving its tongue at me, and I, I realized at that moment I had to find out more about this, this, this iconic image. So I went onto the internet, where all things are, are available for knowledge, and uh, I went through, and, and I, looked, I looked it up, and it turns out that Mick Jagger had had the, the image created by a student named John Pash, uh, who was at the, Lon the Royal School of Art in London, and he actually bought it from him for just 50 pounds, which is, like, a total exploitation, you know, in my mind, because like that, that logo, he never got any, you know, royalties or anything from creating, and it's on everything, literally, and um, so they, you know, created the logo, and everybody assumed, and, and kind of rightly so, that the logo's, the big mouth was, was, was uh, resonating with Mick Jagger's big mouth, which um, <laughs> John Pash even said that was the first thing he noticed about him the first time he met him, but also in the story, uh, Mick Jagger had a picture of, of a Hindu goddess that he wanted John Pash to invoke in, in the icon, in the iconic image that he wanted him to create. And this was of Kali Yuga. And Kali Yuga is the Hindu goddess of, of motherhood, of death, and, and, and also birth, and, and sort of like a warlike goddess. And she's often depicted with her tongue sticking out, very, very bright red tongue. She has blue skin. She wears uh, necklaces of severed heads because she's fierce as fuck. I mean, this woman is like out there with many arms and swords and fighting. And she's the goddess. It's, it's so interesting. It's not just war. It's very, in the, in the literature, it's about this destructive creation. And I really dug that, and that, that did something when I read that. I was like, that's kind of weird because I've been struggling with like creation, and, and I've been thinking about what it means to create. And I'm, you know, and, and it was also this uh, merging of male and female energy, and you know, like the kind of warrior, but, but a mother, but not like this soft Laura Ashley potpourri basket mother. It was like fierce blood mother, you know, like, like out there in the dark, you know, what was, you know, just making things happen. Like she's a scary person, you know, but fierce. And I was also thinking about Mick Jagger, like in his androgyny and merging this male and femaleness and my own bisexuality and not wanting to have children, but wanting to create. And it was really starting to, to resonate with me. And, and usually what I do when I have synchronicities like that, I have this little like gang of weirdos online and we share our uh, synchronicities with each other and just kind of like, hey, this happened, this is kind of cool. But this was kind of personal in a weird way that I didn't want to share right away. I felt like there was something going on and I kept it to myself. And it was actually not until I was invited to speak up in New Paltz, upstate, at a little synchronicity gathering, and it was a few days before that, that I was like, you know what, I just feel like I'm gonna put it out there now. I'm gonna start saying, you know, like put some, some information about, oh yeah, I've been having these syncs with uh, the, the Rolling Stones logo, and it's, it's really pretty weird. So I did put that out there on my little social media networks on Twitter and stuff, and we're you know, being, being nerdy and weird about it. But then I, this guy had invited me, Hal, 
uh, well, we'll call him Hal for now, uh, he invited me to this, this sink thing, and so we went up and we, we gave, we're gonna give a talk at a, a coffee shop up there, and before I gave the talk, right before it was due to, to start, I stepped outside just to get some fresh air, and it's like, you know, New Paltz is a beautiful hippie town, and you know, just out there, like, feeling really good, and it was a full moon, and the moon was coming out. I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. And I look across the street, and they're selling tie-dyed t-shirts. And, of course, because it's a hippie town, and I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of funny. And I look, and the big one that's on display, like the showcase t-shirt, is of a tie-dyed shirt with a full moon and the tongue and lips logo sticking out. So I'm like, oh, there it is. And I, you know, I was at that point, I was like, that's a great sign. That means the talk is gonna go great. You know, we're just gonna have a, it's gonna be a fun evening. And, and it was, you know, I went back inside and we, we had a lot of fun. Everything was really cool. So afterwards we're hanging out and uh, I'm thinking about like, you know, what it means to like meet up with people who are into like these really weird, weird topics and like also into other things like thinking about different ways to save the world and we're having like, you know, our little uh, organic, you know, feast and, and, and I was just like, this is, this is nice. This is like new and it feels good. And I started talking to Hal, the guy who invited me about like, oh yeah, like I just, before the, before the uh, talk, you know, I saw this, this t-shirt and I thought it was a really good sign because it had the tongue and lips logo and I've been, you know, putting that out on, on Twitter and stuff about like how I've been seeing a lot of that. And he was like, oh yeah, I read that, that's really interesting. And he said, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of mythology about doing a tattoo of a tongue like that, an outstretched tongue on your body, especially on your stomach. And it's like a sign of fertility and power. And I was like, oh really, I didn't know that. That's like another part of this. He's like, yeah, you know, when I found that out, that's why I got it tattooed on my stomach. And he raises his shirt and there's the tongue and lips like hanging out. And I was just like, whoa, that is crazy. Like he didn't know Know about what was going on before he had invited me already you know I started putting that stuff out there after I was invited so it's like that's a weird you know connection again you know so I'm thinking like each time this comes up because there it was about like building community and that's kind of where I see myself going like some people are going to be making families and that's 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 a beautiful thing but I was thinking maybe this is a way of making family and this is a, another way of being a creative forceful woman and it felt like that synchronicity was was touching into that and so fast forward just a couple months later I'm still like working through some of this stuff and wondering you know with the synchronicity synchronicity you're always like well how real should I make it you know it's like it's kind of crazy and absurd you just really want to laugh about it and enjoy it but it also has some meaning in there and I still was like wrestling with it so I was giving another talk this time in Utah at our reality sandwich retreat which is an awesome thing to do because you get to hang out with, we were there like with Russell Brand and Graham Hancock and Daniel Pinchbeck and a whole bunch of people just chilling, um, doing you know all sorts of weird ceremonies that uh, Kevin was alluding to and just having a really beautiful time out in the middle of, of, of nowhere and, 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 it's, and everywhere because it was like this beautiful mountain, mountain place. And so I was giving a talk about something else. I was actually giving a talk about online telepathy, which is another kind of related topic that I'm into. And I'm giving this talk and I mentioned, just as an example of what synchronicity was, I mentioned some of these syncs that I've been having with the tongue and lips logo. And so I, so I tell that to everybody in the room. Again, we're in the middle of you know the mountains, very far away, and this guy two, two rows down after I finished talking, he's like, oh yeah, I know all about that logo because my, my dad's the one who created it. And I'm just like, <laughs> what? So, you know, the more I put this out, I'm just gonna, you know, and it's, it keeps unfolding, the more it keeps coming back to me. And I've realized, you know, what, it, what I've taken from it is that there's, I really like this, and that's why I kind of, there's a part of me, my unconscious is maybe making it happen. I totally believe that, but it's also because it's, it's fulfilling for me, like a question that I've had about what it means to be a woman. And for me, it's Kali Yuga, and it's, it's androgyny, and it's like, fuck you, I'm gonna like create what I want. I don't have to be like some normal, quote unquote, normal version of womanhood. I can be fierce woman, I can explore that. I can, you know, I can let that part of me be you know, opened up and, and take over even and not be afraid of it. And so that's, that's, that's my story. Thank you. Jennifer Mom, take off.